Call of Duty's akimbo weapons, for the player who feels one gun just isn't enough. Dual wielding weapons has been a staple in Call of Duty for more than 15 years, and in that time, we've had our share of some very broken ones. So in no particular order, let's talk about some of Call of Duty's most memorably busted akimbo weapons. The G18s. Don't be fooled by their small form factor, because these things pack a wallop. These machine pistols have a fire rate that's through the roof, to a point where it sounds like the in-game audio can't even keep up. If you're a longtime fan of Call of Duty, you can probably hear these guns in your head. In fact, in Infinite Warfare, the G18 was renamed the Hornet. To no surprise, the G18 was introduced in Modern Warfare 2, along with the option to dual wield. If you didn't play Modern Warfare 2, 3, or Infinite, here's what it's like getting killed by the G18. Last time in our Broken Guns Part 1 video, I talked about how lethal just one Fennec is in Call of Duty Mobile. For the true experience, I had to go back and unlock the dual wield perk. I could not believe the difference this made. This has got to be the fastest killing setup in the whole game. Since mobile controls are a little clunky, COD Mobile has an auto fire feature. And let me tell you, auto fire and akimbo Fennex go together like bread and butter. I felt like a hacker just tearing through everyone. These are way too powerful. Every time I play Call of Duty Mobile, I have a big ol' smile on my face. There's a lot of love put into this game, so I suggest you give it a try if you haven't already. But please, if you're really good, stick to ranked matches. It's so nice to have that option. Are you taking notes, Warzone? No? Okay, moving on. Next up is the iconic 44 Magnum. In terms of pure damage, the Magnum has always been one of the strongest handguns in the Call of Duty franchise. One alone has the stopping power perfect for close quarters combat, but with two of them, you become the most rootin' tootin' shootin' broken ass mess of an operator this side of the Mississippi. Since one bullet usually deals anywhere from 50 to 70 damage, all it takes is a second one to seal the deal. For you Revolver fans out there, we've got a great loadout episode where Dave Jewett breaks down the entire history of the Revolver and its uses in both film and video games. You should definitely check it out. The SOG 9mm from Black Ops 4. As a single weapon, the SOG may not be the fastest or strongest SMG, but when it's time to go akimbo at level 13, the SOG becomes a different beast. On small maps like Firing Range and Nuketown, these melt enemy players. Surprisingly, they have a decent potential at medium range, something very uncommon for akimbo weapons. Their fast time to kill is great for catching people off guard. Get the f they also work wonders in free-for-all matches. Just make sure you have scavenger equipped. I can't believe I'm saying this, but out of all the guns on this list, I had the most fun with the XMGs from Advanced Warfare. With major disadvantages like low fire rates and laughably slow sprinting speed, the XMGs come off as some failed Titanfall weaponry. But if you have the patience, these are a riot. They're definitely broken, but in some unique ways. For example, most akimbo weapons have limited starting ammo. The XMGs have 150 rounds each. Other akimbo weapons have terrible recoil and no accuracy due to their widespread hip fire. What is that? The XMGs have no recoil and have a teeny tiny hip fire box. Add that up and you get a pair of guns that destroy people at all ranges. These are perfect for the jumping, wall running gameplay in Advanced Warfare. Don't sleep on these like I did. In many ways, Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer was such an astounding jump from Call of Duty 4. We went from 3 kill streaks to 15, had bigger and badder guns, and of course, the reintroduction of Akimbo. The first gun that comes to mind without a doubt is the Model 1887. At first, we were all fooled by this Red Dead Redemption ass shotgun, but as soon as word got around that this thing was a dual wielding monster, it couldn't be stopped. It was one of the first instances I remember where a gun got patched for being too good. Like many akimbo guns, the models were so fun to use, but annoying as f to be killed with. They didn't take much skill to use, but for a lot of people, that was the appeal. What could be funner than running around with these and shooting every living thing in your path? Being dead, or anything else. First appearing in Modern Warfare 2, of course, the M93 Rafika is an M9 variant with a three round burst. It goes by a few nicknames like Renetti, B23R, and Diamati. Whatever you want to call it, it's broken in every game it's in. Within the last year, both Modern Warfare Renetti's and Cold War's Diamati's have been nerfed. It's hard to justify using any other sidearm when you've got this broken pair unlocked. 
In fact, outside of Warzone, they're used as primary weapons. I was grinding up the Diamati to capture footage, and with just one, I was able to call in a VTOL escort. Enough said. The Rangers. As if Modern Warfare 2 didn't have enough broken weapons. These beloved double barrel shotguns were featured in only two games, so while our time with them was short, it was memorably chaotic. There are tons of cowboy-like guns on this list, but the Rangers take it a step further by the way they're controlled in-game. When dual wielding them, the left trigger fires the left gun and the right trigger fires the right one. Even when you equip just one, the left trigger doesn't function as an aim down sights button. It fires one of the bullets, giving you the ability to fire both shots at once. So, when you're running around with two of these, you've got four overpowered shots at your disposal. You can fire back and forth between guns or pull both triggers at once and watch your enemies fly 100 feet in the other direction. Good times. In Infinite Warfare, you're able to dual wield the HVR submachine gun if you have the epic Gemini variant. Akimbo? No. Twin Sanity? Yes. In short, these two are the UMP-45s of the for Akimbo, they have a pretty small hitbox, so they work a lot like Advanced Warfare's XMGs. Only here, you can run faster, jump higher, and power slide till the cows come home. The footage you're watching here is from Ryan, aka Prestigious Key, who says he personally had the most fun using these Modern Warfare 2 style, with extended mags and laser sights. And by the looks of his footage, I'd say he nailed the perfect class setup for a good time. The Akimbo FMG9s. In real life, the FMG9 was a prototype machine pistol. Its lightweight, collapsible enclosure was designed for transport and concealment. The prototype was brought into Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and we all know how that went. <laughs> At close quarters, the Akimbo FMG9s were unstoppable. Even today, years after patches to the recoil and hip fire spread, these two are simply menacing. In 2021, the creators of the FMG9, Magpul, along with Zevtech, announced the FDP-9. So it looks like they're finishing what they started. Since these two were only ever featured in Modern Warfare 2, it would be awesome to see them return in a Call of Duty title, but only time will tell. The UMP-45 is one of the best guns in Modern Warfare 2, and that's saying a lot. But if your goal is to really just break the game, then Akimbo is for you. This was a close call between the UMPs and the P90s. While the UMPs deal higher damage, the P90s have a faster fire rate. But in practice, they're both pretty similar. And by that I mean broken. Unlike the Magnums or shotguns, you have a good chance of wasting your enemies by simply holding down both triggers and unloading in their general direction. All the dual wielding SMGs are broken in Modern Warfare 2. And I think that's why we don't see them in newer Call of Duty games. Imagine if Modern Warfare's MP5 had an akimbo option. It would be nerfed into the ground. But hey, that was part of the fun of Modern Warfare 2. It was a glorious mess. By the way, don't try to play it now, everyone just noob tubes. Share your favorite dual wielding memories in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.